Welcome to Hope is Here. I'm Greg Horn. We've been talking about being hopeful this week instead of hopeless and uh, just been encouraging people about there's always hope with Jesus. Basing this after off of Romans chapter 15, verse 13, which is the foundation foundational verse for Hope is Here ministry. It simply says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I love the Bible. Just It's so detailed. It says, not just that you'll overflow with hope, but you overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And friends, that's one of the things that you know we don't hear a lot in church. And I know I'm guilty as a pastor; don't talk about it as much as I should. But you know, we have the Trinity: God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they're three in one. And Jesus told the disciples, "Hey, you know, I'm going to leave you, but uh, I'm going to also, you know, I'm going back to heaven. I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit." And, and he described the Holy Spirit as a Comforter, a Counselor. Um, I love the Amplified Bible when it looks at that passage of Scripture. It talks about an advocate for us, okay? And, uh, man, I'm just so thankful for the Holy Spirit. And that verse in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, the last part of that says that we can overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the first part of that verse says, hey, the source of hope is God, who can fill us completely with joy and peace because we trust in Him. So ask the Holy Spirit. It's okay to say, you know, God, just be honest. Say, I'm, I'm doubting some. I'm struggling in my faith. I'm kind of hopeless. I'm not hopeful. And yet God will meet you right where you are. He loves you not where you could be, not where you should be, but exactly where you are right now. And in all honesty, that's just one of the hardest things for me to get my arms around, to know that God loves me even when I'm kind of falling short uh, probably uh, goals that I've set and um, just things that I've wanted to achieve. And doesn't mean that I quit. doesn't mean that I give up. Uh, yet, I'm still thankful that God loves me right where I'm at. And I want you to know that today. There's somebody, you're just exhausted because you're trying so hard to have God love you more or live this perfect life. And it's kind of like, you know, Mary and Martha that Jesus, you know, went and spoke at their house and Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha was running around trying to be the great hostess and she got upset at Mary and he said, you know, to Jesus, have her help me. I can't you see we got things to do here. And I guess you're Jesus saying it, Martha, Martha, you know, hey, all these things, they'll get taken care of. Mary is doing what is required and what is needed, um, sitting at my feet and listening and I just feel like somebody listening today, uh, man, you've got your to-do list, and some of them I know you've got to get done, but some of them can just wait till tomorrow, friends. And I want to encourage you to take a look around at where God's working and join Him in it. And just do as a friend of mine, uh, she used to tell me, she said, Greg, sometimes you just got to breathe. Just breathe. And uh, maybe that's a word for somebody listening today. You just need to breathe and not try to earn God's love, um, his blessing by about you trying harder. It might be about you actually doing less today. Well, yesterday we got started talking about four steps to become hopeful when you're hopeless. Number one, hold on, letter H. We're spelling out the acronym H-O-P-E. Letter O is hold on. The letter O is open up to at least one other person. Open up to at least one other person. Jesus modeled this, friends, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he just he, he told Peter, James, and John, hey, come with me and pray with me. Stay right outside the garden here. Please pray for me because my heart is so overwhelmed with grief and anguish up to the point of almost death. It feels like death. So those of you listening today, you may think, man, God doesn't understand. Jesus, you don't understand how bad I'm hurting. Friends, I think it's pretty obvious there that Jesus actually did. And I'm so thankful that he modeled for us that in our time of need, when we're hurting, our heart is so heavy that we need to ask for help. And Jesus modeled that. And so today, maybe the best thing you can do is just open up to at least one other person. Um, 
you know, what I know and I've seen it in my own life is uh, one friend can change your whole life. One friend can change your whole life. Just somebody that can listen, call, check. I'm so blessed with some guys in my life. Uh, uh, my mentor, my good friend Greg Williams, is amazing at doing that. Um, good friend Tom down in uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm blessed with a great family, um, brother, sister, you know, my mom. I mean, blessed. And a couple other guys that, uh, too, I just, I'm so thankful, friends. And I've tried to be that same type of friend to them. And maybe today you're like, hey, hey, I want to make a difference in my one only life. Reach out to somebody that you know it's really, really hurting and tell them you want to just see how they're doing, what you can do to help them. Here's what I know, though, if you're dealing with sin and you become hopeless, you're dealing maybe just with some sin, uh, whether it's adultery, whether it's gambling, whether alcohol is just taking control of your life and you can't stop drinking, uh, maybe it's credit card debt, you're just buying all these things to fill up that God-sized shape hole in your heart, um, you know, pr prescription pills, whatever it is, uh, it could be food. You know, that's been an area that I've struggled with. I've shared uh, on Hope is Here many times. Um, whatever it is that's separating you from God, which is what sin is, it is amazing when you just share one with God and then one other person um, how you, you get free. You get freedom, and you start the healing process. As I heard Rick Warren say many years ago, with the revealing starts the healing. And Psalm 32, verse 3 says, For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through groaning all day long. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And then Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says, People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Friends, please go to God today and one other person. Open up. You will just feel so much better and the healing process in your life will happen. But you got to open up to at least one other person. Maybe you're saying, you know, Greg, I don't have anybody um, who can do that. Friends, two things. One, reach out to me through our website, hopeishere.today. You send me an email and uh, I'll follow up with you and we'll talk on the phone or we'll try to grab coffee. Or I'm so thankful that back in July, just like we had the number 911, we have a medical emergency or uh, you know need police help or something, uh, they created a national hotline for suicide, mental health challenges, anxiety, worry, suicide, just when your mental health feels really bad and you're just like, I just can't do this anymore. And those three digits are simply 988. That is 988 that you can call 24-7, um, somebody be there to talk to you. So please, please, if you're hurting so bad and you become hopeless, please reach out to somebody, and if nothing else, call 988-DIAL-988 right now. Letter P, put yourself in a new environment. If you want to be hopeful instead of hopeless, you got to put yourself in new environments. And friends, you got to be intentional about this. I saw this great quote by Rachel Hollis earlier this year. It says, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, we talk about, hey, I, I hope this is going to work out, yet we don't do anything to change the situation. We're just hoping. And uh, we all know the old definition in Sandy. It's we keep doing things the same way, but we expect different results. And, man, that's just been a thing that, has helped me to realize if I want to change an area of my life that I'm struggling with, I don't like, that I have got to change the way I do things. And you have to be intentional about it. And, uh, man, I struggle with procrastination as much as anybody on areas that, you know, I don't want to do, don't like to do, but I know I need to do. And so I just want to encourage you to say, you know what, I'm going to be intentional. And we talk about opening up to another person. And when you're, that's especially true if you're hopeless. But also to become hopeful, uh, you might ask for some accountability about somebody, whether it's going to the gym or saying, hey, I'm going to try to, I know I need to go to the doctor. I've not been feeling well. Uh, keep me accountable. Uh, next week when we talk, say, hey, have you scheduled that doctor's appointment? Or did you schedule that appointment with a counselor? And here's the deal. Sometimes the reason we don't put ourselves in new environments is because we don't feel like it. And friends, uh, I've shared with you that, you know, I'm a feeler. 
you know, I'm in ministry and uh, on the Myers-Briggs personality test, I'm right in the middle there on the thinker-feeler part. Sometimes I make decisions using my mind, but sometimes I will use the feeler part of me. And uh, I, even though logically I may say, I don't know if this is what, uh, I know it's what I probably should do, but I feel like I should do this. And, you know, God, the Holy Spirit sometimes asks us to do things that don't make sense. But as long as it doesn't violate God's word, it's okay. But I want to remind you, you can't trust those feelings sometimes. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and it's beyond cure. Who can understand it? And I know everybody listening to me today, you're like, yep, I've been there. I thought, oh, I just felt like I had to do this. I need to do this. I couldn't live without it. And then you did it. And unfortunately, you're like, Oh, man, I wish I would never bought that. I wish I hadn't have done that. Um, we've all done that, been there. And so I'm not judging, condemning anybody, but I am letting you know that if you're going to be hopeful, you've got to press through those feelings where you don't feel like, you know, feel like doing it because your heart can be deceitful. It truly can. So we talked about if we want to be hopeful instead of hopeless, uh, we spelled out the word hope, H-O-P-E. We got to just hold on. Uh, got to hold on. Remember Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions, they never fail. They are new every morning, and great is God's faithfulness. Oh, I love that verse. Uh, man, I had that written on a post, post-it note and stuck it in my bathroom mirror and the dashboard of my car and had it on my laptop when I was going through a challenging season just to remind me each morning, first thing in the morning, that God's love is there and His compassion has never fail and that they're new every morning and that even though when others aren't faithful, God is always faithful. So letter H, hold on. The letter O, open up to at least one other person. The letter P, put yourself in new environments. And the letter E, expect to see changes. And this is where that faith thing comes in, friends. Sometimes you got to dig down deep in your faith. Uh, I like following this person called Real Talk Kim on Twitter. And she had this great quote recently. She said, keep the faith. I threw in the towel. God threw it back and said, wipe your face. You're almost there. And friends, somebody listening today, you need to know that you're on the verge of a breakthrough in your life, a major breakthrough, getting an answer to prayer that you've been praying a long time, but the enemy's wanting you to give up. And I want you to just remember this real tall Kim. You know, she's keeping it real. Keep the faith. I threw in the towel. God threw it back, though, and said, wipe your face. You're almost there. And I know that's true for somebody today. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Friends, sometimes God's like saying, Hey, I just want you to walk by faith and not by sight right now. Just trust me. And I talked about, man, your breakthrough is right around the corner. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn your life around. Friends, one phone call, one text, one email, uh, something you receive in the mail could cha- be a game changer and start the blessing, the healing, the new season in your life. I close with a quote by Albert Einstein. Learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. That goes along with Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, that says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So today, I want you to be hopeful, not hopeless, because of Jesus, and read Romans 15, verse 13, for your source of hope. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here.